arms, part three. The everlasting arms, part three. He is the God of the everlasting arms. Happy are you, O Israel. Your God is the God of everlasting arms. God is all sufficient when we need him most. The eternal God is all sufficiency God. The Tanobi chapter 33 from verse 26 to 27, there is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rise the heavens to help you and in his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and we say destroy. So the figure, just for to recap, the figure arms, the figure arms speaks of strength, power, and deliverance. So if the God of the everlasting ham is your God, then you have access to his strength, to his power, and to his deliverance. If the God of the everlasting arms is your God, if you believe in him, in this dispensation, through the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have access to his strength, his power, and his deliverance. Now, if, if further, furthermore, for the, for the recap, the Israelites, they are going to possess the promised land. We'll read about that soon, that God promised them this land. But they are going to possess it. Moses that has been with them for this past 40 years is about to go. It's going to die. It's not going to go with them to this promised land. It's going to be their new home, but it will not go with them. So he began to encourage them. He began to bless them. He began to tell them the, the God that they are serving, how strong is that God? He began to tell them how that God is going to hold them. And then he said in that chapter 33 of Deuteronomy from verse 26 to 27, he said there is no one like the God of Jeshurun. There is no one like the God of Israelite at their best. There is no one like that. Who rise the heavens to help you? That this is always available. He's ready to help you all the time. And in his excellency on the clouds, the eternal God is your refuge. It's your home. It's your place of abode. He has chosen you. You are special in his sight. And underneath are the everlasting arms. That is, underneath every storm of your life, underneath every failure of your life, underneath every challenge, challenges of your life, underneath every situation of your life, is, is arms. And it's an everlasting arms. Beneath is, is arms. And these arms are everlasting. And it will be there eternally. It will thrust out the enemy be from before you, and we say destroy. You are going to possess a land that has been occupied by some people. So it's a big tax for you. But God is going to do it for you. God is going to help you to, to accomplish this tax. If you read carefully um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2, look at the tax ahead of them. The tax that it will take only God to accomplish. So let us in this part three form this foundation and see what these people are going to face. For verse one, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, Moses speaking to them, and has cast out many nations before you. Many nations. This is operation no mercy. The Ethetites and the, Gash, the, the Gashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Evites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. So it will take God for them to accomplish this destiny. It will take God to make them overcome what they are going to face. I want to tell you today, if you have chosen God as your everlasting arms, if this God of everlasting arms is your God, 
I'm telling you, even in your destiny, things that you will not be able to accomplish ordinarily, it will help you to accomplish it. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm encouraging you, I'm encouraging each one, each and every one of us, let us trust in this God. Let us depend on this God. These people, not that they're not going to face some troubles. We are talking, look at what the Bible put here. Seven nations, greater and mightier than you. People that are mightier, they've been in that place for years. But Abraham was promised about 500 years ago, before now, that this land is going to give to you. But before you can have this land, it's going to destroy everyone in this place. Everybody, including children. This is what we call operation, no mercy. You don't ask me questions. God created all these people he's going to destroy. And he's destroying them for his chosen one. If you are among of, of, of the people God has chosen, he will give men for your ransom. The difference is clear. And this is what we have to understand as Christians, as believers. We have to look at God from the two sides. He's a merciful God and he's a God of vengeance. He will recompense. He will help you. He will destroy all that are obstacles to reaching your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me continue. Verse 2. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. No covenant, no mercy. So, now do you see the task, the task ahead of these people? This new place they are going, promised land, is their new home. But Moses was telling them, now, Physically, yes, it's a new home, it's a promised land, but God himself will be your refuge. That is, God himself will be your home. So the same thing I'm saying to each and every one of us today. It is in home that we have a kind of happiness, we have, we have a trust. We're going to see that as I break it down in this part three, if time will permit us. But I want you to look at God as your refuge. I want you to look at God as your hiding place. I want you to look at God as a place where you can shelter yourself. I want you to look at God as your everlasting arms, eternal, eternal arms that will hold you, that underneath every circumstance of your life, the Lord will ever be there with his arms to hold you. And this is, uh, in this particular area, this Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2 actually will help us to understand this our dispens this person's dispensation. I have heard people saying that, oh, God is not going to destroy anybody. There's, there's nowhere like heaven, there's nowhere like hell. When people die, they die, they die, they die. The scripture cannot be broken. I want you to understand, the scriptures cannot be broken. What God says he will do, that he will do. If anyone if anyone in this dispensation failed to give his or her life to Jesus Christ, if anyone failed to accept Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior, if he departs this place, he will eternally be separated from God. He will eternally be separated from God. When people come to you and tell you, oh, God is so merciful, no, it's not going to kill you. Oh, what about children? Why, why, they, they didn't do anything. Why should God destroy them? Point them to this, Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2. God told them, have no mercy on them. Destroy all of them and occupy that land. Because I promised Abraham that land. Uh, if you read Genesis chapter 15, 18 to 21. The Bible says, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, Abraham, saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Ephrates, the, the Kenites, and the Kenazites, Cadmonites, the Ethites, the Perizzites, the Raphim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Geshites, and the Jebusites. 
We are talking, this covenant came like 500 years ago before what Moses was telling them in that Deuteronomy chapter 7 from, uh, chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2. God said, I'm going to give that land to your descendants forever. And God will always keep his covenant. Whatever covenant God has promised you, that he will do in the mighty name of Jesus. If you read, if you read Luke chapter 17, 28 to 36, Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they built. But on the day that, that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from the heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. If you are here today, please listen to me very carefully. I hope you understand me. If you are here today, you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and as your personal Savior. Think about it today. Think about it today. Christianity is not a religion. In fact, Jesus did not call anybody Christian while he was here. The first time, the first time, Believers who are called Christians was in Antioch after Jesus has died and resurrected and was in heaven. For you to gain access to heaven, for you to have a place of peace with God for eternity, listen to me very carefully. John 3, 16 to 18, explain it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. Who is not condemned? He who believes in him is not condemned. Operation No Mercy is coming. What happened there shall be like the day of the Son of Man. If Jesus comes what we're expecting now is the rapture. If Jesus comes in the sky now, those that have given their lives to him will go and be caught up to be with him in the sky. The Bible says forever we shall be with him. But for those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ, for those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they will be totally separated from that reunion. Think about Christ. It is possible you have been coming to church all your life. But if there is no time in your life, you can remember that you promised to give your life to Christ, that you said, Christ, take over my life. I cannot save myself. You have done it. And I claim the work you have done on the cross of Calvary. And I turn around now to follow you, to do your will, to follow the scriptures. If there is a time in your life you have not done that, you got to do it. You could be coming to church years and you don't understand what we are saying. You got to do it. What will it profit you if you spend the whole of your life in the church and then you, there's no assurance of salvation? What will it profit you? The one that is not condemned, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. He who believes in him is not condemned. You have to believe in Christ not to have God's condemnation. Operation No Mercy is coming. If you close your eyes in death and you have not given your life to Christ, you, got to be, you will be totally separated from him. You will, you will have no, this is the time God will, is, is talking of mercy. This is the time God is talking of grace. This is the time. But once you are separated from your body, there is no repentance in grave, brother. No repentance in grave. So think about Christ. And he said, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And I can say this over and over again. I have tried as much as possible in the midst of every, um, every uh, part in any series to include this issue of salvation. Because what I've discovered is that some people, they just go to church. They think, when I go to church, then it's okay for me. No, it's not. And salvation is personal. The salvation of your son cannot be transferred to you. The trans salvation of your father cannot be transferred to you. 
The transmission of your husband cannot be transferred to you. The transmission of your wife cannot be transferred to you. You. He said, whoever. You. Because we shall all stand before him, one after the other. It has nothing to do about race. It has nothing to do about ethnic group. It has nothing to do about uh, gender. Whoever believes in him. So think about Christ. If you have not given your life to Christ, think about it. And it's very easy to know if you're a Christian. Come on, it's easy. It's not difficult. You know yourself better than I know you. I don't know you. I can see you, but I don't know what you do in your secret place. If you cannot say that there's a difference between the life you are living now and the life you were living before you, you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, something is missing. Something is not right there. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are what? Pass away. All things are new. I have nothing to gain to deceive you. The reason why we are here, we are preparing for eternity. That's why we are here. We are preparing for eternity. And if you are the type that you are living a double life, you try to, you try to put your eternity at risk. You try to do what? Put your eternity at risk. There is nothing here. There is no pleasure you're going to have here that, that, that can be compared to eternity. Any pleasure that is here is temporary. Any challenges we may have in this place, challenges are temporary. They are seasonal. Whatever we are passing through here, they are seasonal. We should be grateful to God every time we are on this planet heart. We should be grateful to God. Be happy. And live your life to please him. Make sure that your eternity is guaranteed with him. And that is the only way you can escape the coming judgment of God. So, God told them through Moses, I'm taking you to this land. I'm going to drive away these powerful nations, mightier than you, and you will possess your possession because I promised you. And I'm praying today, everything that belongs to you, that the enemy is occupying right now, that Lord that help the Israelites to possess their possession and take them to a promised land, we deliver your enemy and you will get into your land and you will possess your possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 126, verse 1 says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. It will be like a dream that a battle you cannot fight yourself and win. There are battles that only God can fight for you. And Moses was promising them, God is going to fight this one for you because these nations are mightier than you. How many of them? Seven nations mightier than them. How are they going to do it? They, these people are coming from wilderness. How are they going to do it? What, 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 what ammunition are they going to use? And these are, I can call them bread, bread and butter children. They were raised in the wilderness. Everything they will eat, God will provide it. If they need sanders, let me see, embassies, no, added. Sanders will be dropping from heaven. They'll be wearing it. If they need a doctor to go clean their teeth, no, dentists will be dropping from the sky to clean their teeth. If they need water to drink, <clears throat> God will be bringing water for them from the rock. If they need food to eat, if they need light, God will bring cloud of fire to give them light. This, only what they know, these people, for 40 years, wilderness. Only a few of them started the journey with them. I can say, oh, we remember when we were in Egypt. Oh, we were eating cucumbers. Oh, we were eating lettuce. Only a few of them. In fact, those that were adults that started with them and can say we are in the same place where Moses was just talking to them, we are just three. Joshua, Caleb, and Moses. All the other ones, dead. Except those that can just remember a little bit of what happened there. Now, Moses himself will not cross over with them. There will be only two adults, Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua will be the new leader. So, for them to possess this promise property that God has promised them and drive away all these people that were in that place before them, it will take only God to do it. 
So there are some things in your life that you cannot do. There are some things in your life that you cannot on your own accomplish. Because the hands of flesh will fail you. Trust God. Make God your everlasting hands. Believe in him. He cannot fail. God is not tired. His everlasting hand is strong. There is strength in that hand. There is power in that arm. There is deliverance in that arm. So I'm just encouraging you. All Moses can do was to encourage them. To tell them you will do it. You will make it. God is going to do it for you. But just make sure you continuously and every time make this God your everlasting hands. He will reach out. He will help you. He will see you through. Money be issue of financial. God will help you. Money be issue of health. God will help you. I'm telling you. Somebody from home just sent me a picture of himself. I, a kind of colleague in the school. He was telling me, he shot with me, was telling me, you know, what happened that he, can, he cannot use uh, one side of his body. You know, when, you know, when you hear that kind of story from home, you think they are lying. So he, he first said that to me, to messenger. And I was praying, I was praying for him. In fact, in a, my wife and I, we pray. Then, this morning, I saw, a, I saw a picture of this man. I was, oh my God. He, he brought his picture. For me, for him to, he was trying to let me know that this is real. Uh, it's, this is not a joke. This is me. And somebody you knew before in that kind of condition. And I'm just praying that God is, oh, if you take God, there are some things that if you take only God to do what? To deliver. And I look at that and say, God, each and every one of us should realize that the life that we, are, we have is loaned. Your life is what? Loaned. The eyes you are using are what? Loaned. The legs you are using to walk around, don't take it for granted. They are what? Loaned. All your fingers. This man told me that, he can, that his, his, uh, his left hand, he can only use one finger. That the others are gone. That it's only the grace of God. So, which means all our fingers are what? Loaned. Every part of your body, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, they are loaned. Don't take anything for granted. Some of us will tell us, come and serve God, let's go to church. I'm busy, Pastor. If you see how busy I am, that bill is piling up. It is when you have health that we pay bills. I'm telling you, let's, move, let's make God first in your life. Accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Your head will not be, will not be challenged in the mighty name of Jesus. Once you have head challenge, once anybody has head challenge, the issue of getting money will become secondary. In fact, the issue of children will become what? Secondary. Secondary. Ah, God have mercy. Sometimes I look at human beings, I look at the way we behave, we live as if we own everything. We live as if, you know, we control everything. We live as if everything here is permanent. It is not permanent. Everything here is not permanent. It will take the grace of God. The, the, the man that was doing uh, uh, Jopadi, whatever Jopadi was doing, was diagnosed with, uh, uh, I think it's a pancreatic cancer, fourth, the fourth stage. He went off the air. He went to take care of himself. He told his people, I'm coming back strong. So after he finished all the chemo, he announced last week that, yes, he's coming back. I forgot his name. Uh, his name. You know what? Yeah, he announced, said, I'm coming back. This new uh, episode, this new quarter, I'm coming back strong. And he said, I'm fighting it. And it is true. It's what? He's fighting it. God has the final say. So look at your life. Appreciate God. Appreciate what you have. Appreciate every part of you and make God first in your life. Don't make him secondary. These people, they are going to a place they never, never imagined they can have. Their future is just in the hands of God. They are not in control of that future. They are not in, they are not in any case, they have no power to overcome all these seven mightier nations. Greater, mightier than them. Only God can do so. Everything that has been stolen by the superman in your destiny, the Lord shall return in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Those that look at you and say, you are, you are amount to nothing. Those that are saying that, you know, 
you are a stranger. We're going to deal with you. We're going to do. Don't be afraid. Moses was telling them, you should not be afraid. Yes, the challenge is very strong. Do not be afraid. Some people, be, be, because of fear, they, they have lost what they're supposed to own. Fear has torment. Do not be afraid. Your destiny is in the hands of God. Your destiny is not in the hands of anybody. Your destiny is not in the hands of any nation. Your destiny is in the hands of God. Do not be afraid. As long as you have given your life to Christ, it's no longer you that lives, but Christ that lives in you. The life that you live now is the life of the Son of God that gave up, gave up his, himself or died on the cross of Calvary for you. It's not your life. Trust God. Believe God. Understand he can do what no man can do. Understand he can take you further than your parents can take you. Understand he can take you further than your understanding, your knowledge can take you. He's never tired. He's never weary. He's never weak. He cannot fail. That is why the everlasting hands of God, as Moses was telling them, will be assured assurance. Is the solid assurance. It's not something that can work today and will not work tomorrow. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3 of that Psalm 126, the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing and bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his shapes, his shapes with him. And that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything you are looking unto God to do, and you have tried every way to do it yourself, and you cannot do it, the Lord shall rise for you as he, as he did for the children of Israel, and they possess this land, the Lord will do the same for you, and it shall be like you are dreaming in the mighty name of Jesus. Just trust this God, the everlasting hands. Look at the position of Moses. There's nothing he can do than to encourage them. It's not going to go with them to this land. If God would have allowed him to go with them to that land, maybe he would still continue to babysit them. Moses was telling, it's like telling them, the time of babysitting is over. Be strong. Go and possess the land. Joshua, we, we take over the leadership. Walk with him. Believe God is the everlasting hands. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides the heavens to help you. And in his excellency on the clouds, the eternal God is your refuge. And ordinate at the everlasting hands. He will thrust out the enemy from before you. And we say destroy. Let me tell you, till the end of your day, there will always be enemy. Do you understand me now? Do you understand me now? Till the end of your day, till your last breath in this life, there will be always what? Enemy. Moses was telling them, he will do what? And, and say, he, said, he will thrust out the enemy from before you and we say, destroy. You will think that because God has promised them there will be no enemy there. They will just go there, they will be eating enemy. You think enemy wants you to eat? You think so? You think enemy wants you to sleep and have sweet dreams? You think so? You think enemy like all the goodies? You are enjoying. You think enemy likes the way you sit down. Those of you that sit near your husband. Sit, some of you sit near your wife. Some of you, you, you have your children, you have everything. Some you have some friends. Some of you, you are looking at pastor finish on time. I just rush, rush down to JC Penny, get some things. Tomorrow morning I'm going to work. You think the enemy likes you go to work? You think so? You think the enemy likes you to go back and sleep? And let me ask you once again. Do you think the enemy like the you, do you think the enemy is happy to see you come into the church first day of the month, September? I want to look back. Look back to the beginning of this year. Look, look. Listen to news. Remember all the news. Some people that are celebrities. Some people that have everything money can buy. 
Some of them are gone this year. They can see first day of September. And then you are still, you are still, you are still thinking God is not good. He will destroy. He will fight for you. He will hold your peace. He will possess your possession. Your enemies will be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you can say, oh, I'm not a minister. I don't have enemy. It is when you are a minister, you are a pastor, you have greatest, greater, mightier enemy. So we say, ah, my, my, my husband lost me. He's always with me in the house. Nobody can call me. So when you sleep, you, you just you move close to your husband. If you hear, shh, hey, honey, go and check out what is there. What is what? What is shh there? You wake him up, you will rush down, you will look. So because at home, you made him your refuge. At home, there is one kind of peace of mind. Before he comes, maybe he's at work, you'll be looking everywhere, you'll be, you know, put camera everywhere, looking at camera, but as soon as he comes in, you don't look at camera again. It's not what? It's responsibility to ensure you are what? You are saved. But God can do greater. Look at this here. This is, Moses was telling he's going to be your refuge. God has to be their refuge, which means dwelling place. God is our home, our abode, our refuge, our dwelling place. This is a metaphor filled with sweetness and assuring hope. When you are going home, you feel happy. When you go on vacation, you go into your hotel room. You, it's, you are not as, you, there, there is no rest as much as when you now say, we are going home. You look at home, you can confidently walk anywhere because it's what? It's your home. You can open the door, you can look at the window, you can go to the fridge, you can bring out something to eat, you can lie on the bed because it's what? Your home. So, what this was saying, though you are crossing to this promised land, make him your refuge, make him your home. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who writes the heavens to help you and his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge. It's your home. It's your hiding place. Then all that you are going to face, every storm in that land, every challenge in that land, he will take care of it because you have made him what? Your refuge. Uh, before we close, I think I'm going to close on this note. Who is your hiding place? Who is your refuge? Whom do you trust? If God is your, uh, is your hiding place, is your refuge, do you have rest? Do you have rest in your soul that you have a God who will take care of everything? Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because it's with you. Do you? Do you? These things is easier said than done. But when you face a challenge, what do you do? Do you just cry and say, oh, my enemy is dead? Is that what you say? When you receive report from your doctor and the report is negative, what do you do? What do you say? Where do you put your trust? Where do you put your hope? To be honest with you, when I was speaking to the news about that man who, who, who does uh, uh, jeopardy or whatever, I think it's very encouraging for what that man is doing. That man is like saying that I will continue this, this race, this thing I love to do most, I will continue it. Regardless of the first stage pancreatic cancer, whatever the doctor is saying, I will do what? I will. He's telling his his uh, his, uh, his fears that I'm restum, I'm coming back. And the man is not in his fifties. He's not in his forties. I think he's eighty something or what? Seventy nine. Thank you. God bless you, man. Seventy nine. Are you telling me to retire? Hello. Are you telling me to retire? Eh? I'm just around the call. I'm just around 60. I'm and you want me to do what? To retire? Excuse me? What do you think those of us that have faith, stronger faith in God, don't you think we should do better? Don't you think we should trust God better? Don't you think, don't you think we should not give up easily like that? Even when enemies make noise, even those of you that are in this country, maybe you are just coming to this country and enemy is making noise at you, hey, we're going to put you into the trunk. We're going to throw you through Atlantic. Don't you think you should not trust in all those garbage? Excuse me? 
And those who are telling you, are we going to cease giving you this? We're going to cease giving you that? Don't you think we should just tell them to keep quiet that your life does not depend on them, but it depends on the God of everlasting harms? Don't you think Christians should do that? Don't you think Christians should, should not allow fear? Don't you think so? If we can make that a refuge, if you are in your home, you are afraid in your home, something is wrong. When you are in your home, you are afraid. If anything is making you and afraid in your home, you, do, you go and do what? And fix it. Let's say you, 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 what was, you, 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 you misplaced your key to your house and you are afraid that somebody is going to get it and open the door and you are afraid and you go and buy a new one and change it. Don't you think you have rest in your, in your soul? If you don't take your home and you rest, in, that you are going home, you, are, you, are, you, you, are, you have a rest. Then, how are you going to be, you know, have rest on the street. Moses was telling them, it's your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting harms. It will thrust out the enemy from before you. And we say, destroy. It will help you. It will save you. If you can take him as your refuge. May you take God as your refuge? Look at what Acts, Acts 17 verse 28 says. Acts 17 28. For in him we live and move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Christians should know that in God we do what? We live. In God we do what? In God we have our being. In God we have our being. When you have earth challenge, just trust that in God you have your being. It's, we will have it. If you are not experiencing it, you will experience it, you will have it. I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, he told God, God, if you give me money, help me to also eat. Then I was thinking in my heart, if you eat, based on the money God has given you, you're going to face some challenges, man. Because if you eat salt, based on how abundant salt you have salt, you're going to do what? So which means, when God bless you, there is wisdom for you to do what? To enjoy the blessing. Because that is also the grace of God. Amen? Amen? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In God, we move. In God, we live. And in God, we have our being. In Him. So nothing's going to happen without His knowledge. Nothing's going to happen to you if you have taken Him as your refuge, your hiding place. Your everlasting harms. Nothing will happen to you without its knowledge. And it's not going to allow any temptation that will break you down, that will surpass the faith that you got. Psalm 62 verse 7 says, in God, is my, is, in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength. And my refuge is in God. Where is your refuge? Where is your place of abode? Where is your home? My home is in God. And Jesus said, I think Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus can talk much of yoke here because he was helping his father as a carpenter. So he knows how to design yoke and how to make yoke. If you take God's yoke upon yourself, you, you, know, you know how they yoke enemy, I mean, yoke animals? They yoke them together. So when you yoke animal, you yoke animal together, they have to go together. If they want to sit down, they have to sit down together. So if one sit down and one is standing up, there is what? There, is, there will be no movement. There will be a problem. So if we yoke ourselves with God, yoke ourselves with God, don't you know what it means? If you go around, God goes with you. If you come back, God goes. If you sit down, God does what? There must be understanding. There must be communication. You don't yoke dog with, uh, with us. If you yoke dog with us, what's going to happen? That is problem. Big one. First and foremost, us is huge compared to the size of dog. And dog sometimes may not be as easy to control as you can control a horse. 
when you put a bridle in the, in the heart, mouth of us, you can control. How many people do you see that we sit down on on uh, on 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 on, on, on uh, goat and say, "Go, take me out, take me, where, where, take me, take me." God is going to look back and do. I mean, it's going to dis- do something serious. But you can sit on us and control us. So, if you want to yoke yourself with God, you must understand God. You must communicate with Him. You must do what He wants you to do, so that you can have a smooth journey. And some of us we don't want to do that. We want all the privileges, all the blessings, but we don't want to follow His instruction. And Jesus was saying here, but to be honest with you, he said, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. If you yoke yourself with me, I will take care of the rest. I will, I'm gentle. And listen, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy. You cannot compare my yoke to the one that, if you yoke yourself, some of us, we prefer to yoke ourselves with our friends than to yoke ourselves with God. Some people, you will prepare to yoke yourself with unbelievers than to yoke yourself with Christians. Jesus is saying, my yoke is easy and my body is light. We shall continue um, next time we meet. Father, we thank you. We bless you today for your mercy. Grace, thank you for the opportunity. You are the everlasting hands. We thank you for your promises for the Israelites, how you promised to help them overcome enemies, nations that are mightier and greater than them. Seven nations, mightier and greater than them. You want to destroy, you want to cast down, you want to eliminate his operation, no mercy. And then they will possess the land and enjoy your promises. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that did that is the God we are serving now. And we pray, Lord, everything that has been stolen in our destiny may they be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything's taken care the enemies are staking in our destiny. Lord, you that did this, restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let it be as, we, as if we are dreaming in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our God of everlasting hands. Help us to find our rest in you. Help us to take you as our refuge, our, our dwelling place, a place where we can hide and find rest for our souls. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.